Hello, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Brian Schmuck with Indiana Wing Civil Air Patrol, and I've got Kate Schessler with me. And Kate works in the International Space Station Mission Control Center in Houston, Texas, as a biomedical flight controller and operations team lead. In other words, she helps fly the space station. She is also a former Indiana Wing cadet, spots number 1646. Kate, thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. Now, Kate is going to talk to us about her career at NASA. And uh, to that end, how did you end up uh, end up choosing biomedical engineering as a, as a uh, as a degree? Sure. Um, well, I've always been interested in math and science, so I thought engineering would be a good fit. However, towards the end of high school, I developed an interest in anatomy and physiology. So I thought maybe I'll do pre-med, but I still really enjoy math and science. So I combined interests and pursued a bachelor's of science degree in biomedical engineering at Indiana Tech in Fort Wayne. Okay. And can you tell me how you ended up working at NASA? A combination of good timing, interview skills, and some luck. I had a nice job after college, but I was looking for something a little bit more challenging. Uh, I applied for this job, but didn't fully realize what it was until I flew down for the interview. Uh, when I applied, uh, I spent a considerable amount of time talking about my experience and accomplishments in a CAP. Uh, which the interviewer seemed more interested in than what I had to say about my college experience. Can you tell me what a normal day at work is like? Sure. So I work in Mission Control in Houston. I have a picture of it. Okay. I'm responsible for countermeasures, which is the exercise equipment the astronauts use. They spend two and a half hours a day exercising. So they have a treadmill, two, one on the US segment and one on the Russian segment, a weight machine, and a cycle. Okay. I'm also responsible for environmental monitoring and space weather. So these are some of the things we use to monitor the environment. I'm also responsible for health systems. So all their medical devices and testing. Wow. Um, so when I'm not in mission control, I am in my office and I am planning and preparing for upcoming activities and projects. Uh, for the space station. Okay. Uh, did you have to go through any special training or, or learn anything new um, beyond your education at college in order to do your job? Yes. So I went through two years of intense training. I took a lot of the same classes that astronauts take. Um, and some fun. I had a lot of fun learning about the space station in the mock-up facility here in Houston. It's life-size model of the International Space Station. Wow. And um, we, in addition to classes, we also had to take a lot of tests, uh, which is very similar to the learning I went through as a CAP cadet. Okay. Uh, can you tell me what type of grades you had in high school? So I don't remember my exact GPA, but I was in the top 10% of my class, and I was a member of National Honor Society and many extracurricular activities. I took my, my work ethic a notch up in college and really made an effort to try to stand out, stand out of the crowd in both college and outside of the classroom. Okay. Now, uh, you have a, a very complicated looking job. Can you tell me what's the, uh, the most difficult thing 
uh, about your job? The most difficult thing is trying to solve problems quickly and efficiently on the space station, which is 254 miles away. Uh, due, the, due to the lack of gravity, astronauts have to work out every day to keep their muscles strong. Um, one of my rotations was as a technical liaison, and all of our exercise equipment broke down on one day. Um, I had just started this rotation, so I was just getting my feet wet. Uh, but I worked with several engineering teams to fix it as soon as possible. Uh, we fixed the bike in the same day, but the treadmill and weight machine took some more time. Wow. Now, th this isn't something that I prepared you for in advance, but I'm curious, and I think everybody that's listening might, or watches this might be curious as well. What, what's a potential side effect of, of if, if you weren't there to do that job, if, if that equipment had broken down and you weren't able to fix it, what could be a potential side effect of that? Sure, so if the astronauts go long enough without exercising, they'll have muscle and bone loss. Um, without gravity holding them down, their, their muscles and bones would be all rubbery, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Wow. Uh, so that's, that's the most challenging part about your job. What, what part of your job is, is the most fun? Um, I enjoy the challenge working in operations. Uh, CAP is very similar, as you know. Uh, I also enjoy flying a spaceship with some very intelligent people who I consider great friends. Uh, the job is intense, but it also is what makes it fun. Now, what would you say about, about your job is the least fun? <laughs> Making mistakes. Uh, everyone makes mistakes as part of being human. The, in the type of work I do, attention to detail and communication uh, is critical. It sometimes can mean the difference in emergencies and life and death situations. Uh, on a rare occasion, I will make minor mistakes, but for the most part, catch them and fix them. Mistakes are impossible to cover up in my job, so it's best to be honest and formulate answers. Um, let's see. That's that's pretty much it. <laughs> hey, can you tell me what is your proudest achievement? So I'm part of a great team of people, and all my accomplishments have had the help of someone else or a team of people. I was the Expedition 46 and 52 BME mission manager. So as a mission manager, I was responsible for planning and executing an expedition worth of medical related activities. I was also the technical liaison for expeditions 41 and 42. And I've already explained to you what I experienced <laughs> at the beginning of that rotation. Um, but due to my efforts and my teams, I was recognized by the JSC Center Director and the astronaut crew for, for our quick response and troubleshooting. Okay. Now, to switch gears a little bit, uh, how often do you use the things that you learned in, in high school, like, like math and science in particular? Um, so I often hear kids say, uh, why do I have to learn this? I'll never use it. Admittedly, learning calculus and all of that probably isn't essential to be a successful adult. However, learning how to systematically solve problems is essential to being a successful engineer. And understanding problem solving skills just on a basic level is required skill, in my opinion, to be a successful adult. I would agree. Now, what is the, uh, the coolest thing that you've done or seen in your job there at NASA? So the most fun I've had was flying on the zero G plane. Uh, CAP textbooks might know this as the vomit comet. <laughs> so we flew parabolas, and I'll, I'll use a little space shuttle as a demonstration. But parabolas are where you go up at a steep angle and then down really fast. And when you go down really fast, you experience weightlessness, or depending on the angle, 
different gravity and different environments, such as the moon or Mars. Um, so my objective was to try to perform water testing and CPR while being at zero G and simulating the gravity on the moon and Mars. So here are some photos of me inside the airplane. Wow. It was a lot of fun. Um, I also experienced two different kinds of scenarios in a hyperbaric chamber or a high altitude chamber. The first was flying up to 25,000 feet without oxygen uh, to figure out what my symptoms were. Everyone's lack of oxygen symptoms are different. Um, mine were, I thought everything was funny and I couldn't think clearly. <laughs> uh, the second scenario was a sudden deep compression at 30,000 feet. So this is similar to if you're flying in a commercial jet and all of a sudden lose cabin pressure, which is what the stewardess uh, talked to you about before every flight. Uh, this isn't as scary as it might seem. I felt like I had plenty of time to put on my mask. The only thing I felt was a, being suddenly cold. Otherwise, it was no big deal. Uh, so this is a picture of my colleagues and I inside the hyperbaric chamber. Once we got up to 25,000 feet, we had to be in, we're there probably 20 minutes or so. We had to put on our masks by ourselves. So that was challenging for some of us without oxygen. Seems like such a simple task, but I guess that's one of the challenges with oxygen deprivation is being able to complete simple tasks under that experience. Yeah, so we did simple math and simple spelling, and I, I don't think I got those questions right. <laughs> Um, now, if you were talking to somebody who, who had the dream of working for NASA in, in any role, really, what would you say to them to, to help guide them and, and help them make that decision? Stay in school, work hard, and strive for good grades. Um, NASA has several internship opportunities for both high school and college students. And also, after college or after graduate school, apply for a program called NASA Pathways, which is an excellent setup for a great career at NASA. Okay, great. Is there anything else that, uh, that you wanted to talk about that, that we haven't already discussed that you think somebody might be interested in? Uh, hmm. I don't think so. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll end the recording. If you'll hang on a minute, um, I, I'll, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more off, off recording. Uh, I appreciate okay. you taking the time to, to talk to us today and, and share your story. And hopefully it will motivate, uh, motivate someone towards that same career path. Sure. My pleasure. Thank you.